We have a strengthening hurricane, everyone. Hurricane Eric, now the second major hurricane of the 2019 Pacific hurricane season. Here is on the projected path and the current official information from the Central Pacific Hurricane Center. Hurricane Eric, it did actually became a hurricane yesterday, uh, winds up to 75 miles per hour, but but the next day, which is right now on July 30th, it it continued to strengthen rapidly, and now it is at 150 miles per hour. So that is considered at a Category Three, which is the second major hurricane of the season. A center location: 13.4 north latitude, 142.8 degrees west of the longitude. Maximum winds again 150 miles per hour, and moving to the west at at 17 miles per hour but it looks like we're going to see on um, just more of a west northwest turn and component into that track and you can see the forecast is it, it, it's now expected to become 125 miles per hour so it makes it at a high end at category three on the saffir simpson scale but my expectations and and uh that the conditions are right that hurricane eric could even possibly become a category four on the Sacker Simpson hurricane scale, either 130 or 140 miles per hour, either way. But um, either way, the intensity doesn't matter because the system's not making landfall. But it will matter in terms in terms of the season and its trek. But you can see of where it's going to be going throughout the next um, couple of days. It's track basically um, uh, just south of uh, the Big Island of Hawaii. And you can see where it's expected to be in the west-northwest. And then weaken um, uh, below major hurricane status. And then transfer into a tropical storm as it makes its um, uh, close approach to the Hawaiian Islands throughout the next couple of days. At Friday... Uh, um, Right around Friday morning, which is going to be on um, on the first week of August, so um, even if the center doesn't come, um, they're very close, guys. On um, the rain bands and some of those showers can, on uh, can produce um just quite a bit of rain in some areas. That includes on the Big Island of Hawaii, and also watch out for also possibly on uh, the for uh, some isolated tornadoes as the system progresses closer into the state. Yes, tornadoes are possible with the outer bands due to um uh, due to um on uh, low level friction which obviously causes low level shear um underneath on those in those thunderstorms and can induce a little spin of tornadoes very quickly. So, uh Hawaii Watch out for possible tornadoes and also watch out for flash flooding uh, possibly as the system gets closer to the coast. So uh, here is the satellite imagery on Hurricane Eric and you can see how well organized this is. It's starting to appear from sunset actually and you can make out on the very well defined eye a, um, a circular um, and symmetric and central dense overcast and a very good outflow channel expanding out in all directions there. You can see the well-defined eye right there. Um, just very small and quite compact in size right here. The central dense overcast is uh, very well symmetric. This is not good news because because the system is in ex exceptionally favorable environmental conditions. Wind shear, warm sea surface temperatures, and dry air is also decreased. So a uh, category four, a definitely a uh, possibility, if not likely um, uh, by the next uh, uh, update from um, the National Hurricane Center. And I forgot to mention the pressure, pressure at 966 millibars so it continues to drop as the hurricane continues on um, to rapidly strengthen rapid intensification taking place here so uh let me show this on on the infrared sally imagery and uh when i stop it it actually on the on the hurricane had a very well defined eye here which i'm going to show you here you see the cdo it's just it's starting to wane a little bit but nonetheless Eric, it still remains a powerful hurricane, and there's no doubt in my mind that this could become a Category 4, possibly winds up to 130 
maybe 140 miles per hour, depending on how long it spends over um, if favorable conditions. Obviously, wind shear will pick up in the next uh, couple of days, but the system will probably reach its peak intensity, uh, probably a, a Category 4, but we'll have to see. And, uh, and there's always unexpected uh, changes it's, uh, with its uh, intensity and its track. But you can see the well-defined uh, central dense overcast and, um, and the eye in, in the middle of the storm. It is just a very um, just still well organized. So luckily, this is going to be passing the south of the islands but uh, of Hawaii. But again, rainfall can occur in, um, in the big island due to the mountainous terrain. So let's look at Tropical Storm Flossie still. And this, uh, this is also expected to become a hurricane within the next um, to 6 to 12 hours or so. The current in, current information from the National Hurricane Center and center location 12.2 north degrees uh, north latitude and 120.5 degrees west longitude. So moving um, um, into the west, maximum sustained winds at 70 miles per hour, so it makes it below hurricane strength intensity, 74 miles per hour higher, and movement again to the west at over 15 miles per hour. So uh, looks like we're going to see um, potentially a Category 2 or maybe even a major hurricane depending on how on how well organized on um, the system gets but when we take a look at the satellite imagery on tropical storm flossie it looks like um on the outflow it has a has a decrease a little bit on the northern side as i played this you can see a little bit there but the but the cdo is not quite a pronounced as it was on the last few days but nonetheless it's it's a, trying to get its act together again, and you can see the outflow expanding now into into the northeast. And as I outline this, when it, which I can show you, you can see the outflow expanding now to the into the northeast, and it's not so much on um, on the dry in the northeastern side. And you can see the central dense overcast is trying to make a comeback right here. But um, there, there, there might be um, hindrance of dry air trying to impinge upon the system, on um, which in these uh, quadrants right here, the on um, on the western quadrant of the system. But nonetheless, the system is trying to intensify and get um and get better organized again. Uh, it is under our warm waters, 83, 85 degrees or higher. Uh, Fahrenheit in, in um in the Pacific Ocean, wind shear is low, so uh, so that's a thing that we ha always always had to consider, and also, um, on the thunderstorm activity, we need moisture and of course instability in the atmosphere. So we always have to keep in mind about that. So a uh, tropical storm, Flossie rejected path. It's it's going to be basically moving to the west northwest maybe even a western job but uh, but saturday and sunday at in the morning time frame it is not certain of where the system goes and also hurricane eric it's not certain whatever this is going to go so so all depends on whenever the steering currents come in play uh, to give us an idea of where the system is going to be steered but we think um both of these storms could come close enough to bring some impacts to the Hawaiian Islands. Not a landfall um, as hurricanes because of wind shear that's going to be diving down and and ripping these two apart. So um, hurricane force winds in Hawaii are practically unlikely, but hurricanes, um, hurricane landfall in in, um, in the state of Hawaii is quite rare, but I won't be surprised if later in the season could actually be be uh, be the case. But we we'll have to see in the next couple of months. So uh, that's Flossie and Eric. Now we're gonna check out on the brand new disturbance on uh, just right behind it. Sorry, I got back to it. So uh, this new disturbance um, has a twenty percent chance throughout the next five days. A broad area of low 
uh, of disturbed weather is associated with a tropical wave located a few hundred miles south of Abichol. I can't read that correctly, guys. Uh, I'm not a Mexican yeah, uh, language. Um, Mexico. Some gradual development of the system is possible late this week while the system moves quickly westward away from the coast of Mexico. So uh, this could also become a, 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 a tropical depression or a tropical storm in the next uh, several days as it progresses uh, quickly westward. So I have to keep an eye on this as well. But the only good news is that Mexico is going to be spared from all these storms because they're moving west at this point. So that's the Pacific. Now we're going to switch to the Atlantic. We still have these two... Um, uh, disturbances in the Atlantic Ocean and 95L, which is the invest in the um in the northeastern Caribbean Sea, and also a brand new disturbance in in the main development region south of of the Cabo Verde Islands. This is expected to move uh, west northwest, and the, the European model is still heading on to to a storm developing when it gets into uh, or just over. Uh, the Dominican Republic in the next uh, couple of days or just north of it. So uh, the only good news is that the storm will be passing to the north, but I could show you quickly on on the forecast models on the Tropical Tibbets website uh, to see what, what I'm talking about. So on the overall European, here is the wave down here. And as I play this, and here is 95L, by the way, right there over the Dominican Republic and Cuba. So as I play this, uh, 95L won't become anything, just a, um, a little bit of an open trough. I don't know why I did that. So an open trough right here, or basically a front or something like that. I'm not sure. But the, so far, this guy right here is getting and uh, getting quite exact together. So when I play this once again, and you can see it actually a small compact storm when it nears on uh, the Bahamas could get rather close uh, to the state of Florida in, in the United States of America. So overall, the system will be turning out to sea as this uh, um, as this cold front, which I'm gonna outline. This cold front right here, which is associated with a large low pressure system. I'm not sure if this is a, a trough of low pressure, but and also the Bermuda high, or basically a high pressure system, all these um, um, the, uh, uh, steering currents are basically going to turn the system straight out to sea, providing an open break uh, for, for this uh, thing to escape away from land, away from the Bahamas and the United States. But it's also possible that high surf can occur along the East Coast. So we'll have to keep an eye on this closely. And and to stay tuned in my channel uh, for, uh, for, uh, for the tropical update on my YouTube channel. All right. So this is going to be it for my for, for my channel, guys. If you did... Um, the, if you did enjoy the video, make sure you leave a like and a comment. Also, make sure you subscribe to my channel. Click the no, click the bell notification icon to get to get notified whenever I post a new video. All right, have a good day, everyone, and possibly tomorrow afternoon I'll have another update. All right, thank you for watching.